Hi friends, welcome to Open Studies YouTube channel. This is part 17 in Azure Databricks playlist. In this video, we are going to discuss about how to parameterize SQL notebooks in Azure Databricks. In our past video, we have discussed about widgets and also we have discussed about how to pass values to these widgets when you are making call to that particular notebook, right? So if you haven't watched my previous videos in this Azure Databricks playlist, then I will strongly encourage you to watch those videos first and then come to this video. So we have already known that widgets are the one which will help you to create parameters in the notebook. So parameterization is something like uh, if you have a notebook uh, and if you want to dynamically supply some values into that notebook during runtime, then you can create parameters in that notebook and you can supply values to those parameters. And inside the notebook logic, you can use that parameters according to your own needs. So this is what we have discussed in our previous video. And we created Python notebooks. That means we basically written code in Python and we created widgets using Python code only. So in this video, we are going to discuss about how to create widgets in SQL. So that means if we are able to create a widgets in the SQL, that means we are able to create parameters in the SQL also in the notebook. And then we can consume that parameter values inside our SQL queries as well. So let me practically show you this so that you will make sense of it. Let me go to browser. So here I just created one, uh, this is my Databricks workspace, I created a cluster called Demo Cluster. Now let's try to create a new notebook and let me name this notebook like maybe Mahir notebook, okay. And then here default language Python or you, you can select SQL language also. Even if you select Python language notebook also, use a magic command called percentage SQL to make sure whenever you try to write a SQL code. So let me hit this create button to create a, a notebook in Databricks workspace which is by default language is SQL. So if even if you created a Python notebook here, you simply use this magic command something like this percentage SQL. This will make sure whatever the line or whatever the code you write before this after this command, all the code is SQL code. So we are you are indirectly telling to the Databricks like this is a SQL code. So you so here I no need to use this SQL command actually. Why? Because by default language in the notebook itself is a SQL. So now so if I want to create a widget which is text type in the SQL, then how to create it? So simply do like this, so click create, then widget, then what type of widget is it? Text, okay. And there are multiple types of like drop down widget, text widget, everything we discussed in our past video. So that's why I am saying, please watch my previous videos and then watch these videos so, so that you will make more sense of it. Now, whenever you create any widget, you need to give a name to it. So let's say maybe first name is my widget name. and then if you so i want to supply some default value also so you, i can use default key weld maybe shake is the default value so now if i execute this code this is going to create a widget so let me hit shift enter to execute this code the moment code execution completes you can see there is a text box created here and the default value is shake in it and if you see we use this first name as a name right if you want to access this value you always need to use this uh, first name uh, uh, as a name to access it and how to access that widget values also we are going to see in a just a bit so not only this we can create a widget called uh, like drop down type of widget also so let me practically show you that so for for that uh, let me see same type of command like create uh, let me do let me write it in another cell here so create then widget then what type of widget is it? drop down widget okay then maybe let's assume uh, gender is widget name okay create widget gender then what is the default value you can you need to supply a default value maybe let's assume male is a default value and then you need to give so it since it is a drop down you need to supply the choices as well so if you see here uh, create widget drop down then name of that particular widget then default value then choices then in the choices you can supply a subquery as well so what what i will do for now choices then here simply i am using select uh, male alone okay so now this drop down is going to contain only one value and that value will be defaultly selected only. So let me hit this shift enter button to execute this code here. You can see gender widget created and there is a male value. And when I hit the drop down, there is only one value. Why? Because this is subquery returns only one value. Okay. So now in practical scenarios, how we actually use it? We kind of uh, use a select query on top of some tables to get distinct values or something and then populate them into this drop down. And there is something called like a get function get argument function to get that uh, value from that widget. I will practice or you, you, you can even call it like a parameter. So basically it is a widget 
which acts as a parameter okay so to practically show you that let me quickly do one thing so here firstly let's remove these two widgets whatever i created to to remove the widgets there is another command called like remove widget then give the widget name so first widget name is first name right so that is was the name of the widget we give right if you see here so let's execute this cell it is going to remove this first name widget here see that gone now let's try to remove this another widget which is gender so let me hit shift enter to execute this cell see it removed everything now let me close all the cells here and let, and let me practically create one temp table in the spark notebook and then use that accordingly so let me close all the cells and here so uh, so let's assume uh, i want to write a python code so i should use a magic command called python here okay uh, so here let me create a variable called data and it, it will contain basically a list list of tuples so let's assume this is id column then name column let's like mahir is a name then maybe gender column like male okay and that's another item inside the same list and uh, this is like a second employee or second person information so pradeep is the name then let's assume male is gender then let's create another tuple inside this list and this is also like a uh, person information maybe annu is name then female is gender okay uh, so now uh, okay let me add one more thing as well so that we, it will be more clear so i am adding two males and two females here like four then name is shakti and then gender is female maybe okay so i created a data variable which contains a list list of tuples actually then i am creating another variables like maybe column calls and this is a list of like maybe uh, id column then name column then gender column now if you closely observe like these are like this is also list this is also list this list contains column names this list contains data so why i created this kind of list actually so uh, because this data i can pass it as a parameter values into a create data frame function inside the spark to create a data frame and from that data frame we, we are going to create a table as well let me practically show you that so here there is something called spark dot create there is something called create data frame table so create data frame if i am not wrong this is create data frame table okay then here there is something called data parameter to the data parameter i can pass like uh, data then i can pass columns and whatever the data frame it creates uh, it will store it into a variable called df so that's what i given a name then i can use a display function to the df now let's execute this code i, I doubt about this function name okay so yeah as i expected let me create data frame okay this is the exact spelling of it so now let me execute this particular cell by hitting the shift enter so now it created a data frame and with that a data frame it is showing like this, using this display function it is showing the data to me here now this data i want to convert into a table so what i can do there is something called uh, spark uh, on top of data frame df is the data frame name right what we have given so on top of the data frame there is a function called create or replace view something okay so let me let me look for that function name here so why intelligence is not coming because this is a sql and here i am typing a python code so let me use that magic command first so percentage python then on top of data frame there is something called create or replace uh, temp view right so this will create a temp table within the session so let me name this uh, table name as persons okay with this data frame data whatever we are seeing here with that data it is going to create a table called person so let me hit shift enter to run this cell and to create the table so table is created right now let's directly use a sql code i am not using a magic command called percentage sql why because this is already a sql book so shift uh, select star from then persons is the table name right so if i execute this code it is going to query that table which we created and it, it is going to give the data so now let's assume i want to create a drop down called gender which will contain values from this column so how i can do it simply use this create widget what type of widget drop down okay create widget drop down we have to name it maybe like we will name it gender dd gender drop down then default maybe default value male i will use okay in the single quotes i need to use the male then choices so here i need i can use a sub query so sub query is going to be select gender column from persons let me hit this shift enter button 
to see whether it will create a see it created a drop down and we get values male male female female why because if you see our table we have male two time female two time so what we need to get it we need we want to get a distinct values right to populate the drop down so what we should do first let me try to remove this drop uh, widget remove widget what is the widget name gender dd right so let me execute this to remove this widget here so widget got removed now here i should make sure to use select distinct gender from the persons table and take that as a choices into drop down and create a drop down with this name so now let me execute shift enter and see whether this will create a drop down or not see it created a drop down and we have male and female so let's assume i selected a female here now for some reason i want to take the value whatever it is coming inside this parameter or inside this widget and then query my table data accordingly so what i can do it here is for example what i am trying to see is i want to select star from that person's table where gender column value equals to whatever the value i am getting here into this parameter so how to do that so there is something called like get argument uh, there is something called like get arguments function so if i uh, okay I, I, I see if you see here get argument is the function name and to that function name you need to pass your widget name or parameter name then that will get the value from it so i am going to do the same thing so get argument function to the get argument function i am going to pass my drop down name drop down widget name or parameter name so now if i execute this this is going to get a value female from here and then it will get replaced here female so wherever the gender column contains the female value those rows will get filtered using this select statement so let me hit this shift enter and see whether this will work accordingly or not see we are getting only female now if i select male here and if i re-execute this statement it is going to get a only male employees so as i said in my previous videos now into this widget or into this parameter we can dynamically pass the value from the another notebook execution or even from the data factory also whenever you try to call this notebook you can create a parameter with this name inside the databricks notebook activity and supply whatever the value you want to pass it to here and that value will get replaced here and the query will execute accordingly so in this way we are parameterizing our notebooks even in the sql also and we can dynamically pass the values as well i haven't shown a video how to call this notebook from azure data uh, data factory actually i will show that as well in our next video so uh, let me go back to presentation i think that's it in this video okay there is another syntax you can use either this get argument function or you can use this kind of syntax also to read the data from that parameters dollar then that particular parameter name or widget name so if i want to practically show you here so let me remove this so you need to place dollar here and then you need to give the uh, the widget name or the parameter name so now let me select female here so that we can see this data gets modified accordingly or not so let me hit shift enter to execute this cell and see we are able to get the values from that parameter so thank you for watching this video i hope you got an idea about how to create widgets or how to create parameters in the sql notebook please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notification whenever i add videos thank you so much